I have YouTube live. Hold on my screen. Are you good? Yep. You are set. I am set. Thank you very much. How many do we have on Zoom? I don't know. We have myself and the town clerk. Uh, we didn't admit anybody. We have 10 people. That's good. All right. Welcome, everyone. Okay. I welcome everyone to the. Again. <laughs> I welcome everyone to this May 20. 5th, 2022 Rush Town Board meeting. Will you please join me in our salute to our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Will our town clerk call the roll, please? Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Here. Councilman Morelli? Here. Councilman Wolver? Here. Supervisor Cusey? Here. Um, a couple of announcements before we get started. I want to start off with our upcoming Memorial Day ceremony, which will be at the Veterans Memorial up the street, right across from the Creekside Inn. We will not have a Veterans Day Parade because, I'm sorry, a Memorial Day Parade, because the veterans tell me that they are aging and there's not a lot of young veterans to take over for them don't really want to walk all the way from there up to Pine Hill Cemetery and back. So we are going to have a short ceremony at the Veterans Memorial Park. And I hope that is everyone because I'm an old guy like they are, and I don't want to walk all that. That's on Monday, Jerry? That's on Monday. What time? 11.45. Get there at 11.30. Maybe somebody will bring tea and crumpets. Um, I also want to call your attention to uh, a couple of changes on the uh, agenda. Under new business, we're going to talk about, because I want the residents to know what we're talking about. We're going to talk about a, a mowing resolution or the highway department and the detail will be forthcoming when we get there. Um, I also wanna let you know that we are having a attorney client privilege session tonight. Um, we won't be making any decisions or taking any votes, but we will be talking about some business matters that need to be resolved and we will return and adjourn the meeting. So if you've got anything to say, make sure you say it during the live meeting. And that is right now because I'm gonna stop talking and hope that someone out there would like to comment during the public comment period. Yes, sir. Others come first to say that. Oh, I think everybody's waiting for you. So if you'll get up and give your name and address, that'll be great. And remember the microphone does not work. work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our only microphone is here at the OWL. Uh, my name is Hans Schmidt, 119 Rush West Brush Road. As you might suspect, I still want to talk about solar. And um, I'll try to make this brief, but I was 
I was in the West Coast, the East Coast of Mexico and snorkeling for a bit. And I gotta tell you, the situation with the coral is kind of miserable. Why it's bleached, why is it bleached? In part because of acidification of ocean. So the reason for that goes back 25 years when I gave a demonstration in front of fifth graders at Lee School, where I had them blow into a glass of water to a tube, like a straw, and I had put an indicator dye in there that indicates the pH, and as they blew, the water turned red. And I tried to explain to them, even though they didn't know chemistry, that carbon dioxide turns into carbonic acid. So it's not just global warming, although that is a concern, it's also acidification of water in the ocean. Why? Because the buffer there, the salts, can't handle all of the extra carbon dioxide. So coral reefs are one of the first people to be very sensitive when they die. But rather than go on for my extra three minutes, I wanted to urge you, I don't know where you stand because I was missing for a week, on the uh, Helios project. I think it's going to come up for, uh, what's it called, Gary? The rezoning? Overlay? Overlay district. District. And I would like to urge you all to vote for that. I think it's very important, just not for the globe, but also it's really amazing for energy. And it's brilliant, actually. I mean, you think about it, it's really not toxic, if it were, many of us. Um, it's not that ugly, I don't think. Otherwise, we would have it on our homes. And, you know, if you look at it from a distance, yeah, it's not the same as a cornfield. But, you know, I think if you think about it long enough, you realize that I was trying to think about what's the ugliest thing in Russia. I'll tell you what I think it is. It's the telephone poles and telephone wires and all that crap. And we happen to ignore that and live with it. So I think some appropriately placed solar farms in this country are just fine. So I urge you to vote for it. That's my song and dance for this week. The globe needs it, and they need it in a hurry. Thank you. And I'm going to violate my own rule for this public comment period. And once again, say for everyone to hear, I don't know anyone on this board who is opposed to solar. I want to make sure that everyone knows that. What some of us are opposed to is the placement of solar, solar facilities that encroach upon existing residential neighborhoods. Yeah, I want to add one more thing. You got yes, 30 I seconds. I understand all that. Well, you know, like what I have to say. I think the deliberation that I observed here the last three months really special. I think you guys did a marvelous job in uh, deliberating all the points that these, these gentlemen brought up. And you guys did a nice job. So thank you for that. Thank you. Who else would like to make a comment? Supervisor Joanne Scanlon is on Zoom and she would like to speak. Oh, absolutely. Hello, Joanne. Hi, guys. How are you? Um, so Hans, welcome back. And I, um, you know, I, I agree with all the points that he made. My, um, actually, my comment today is not about solar. It is about the uh, town calendar on the website. I went to it just to see what's coming up and it's completely blank. Um, so I don't know who is maintaining that site or updating the calendar, but I think it really should be um, you know, it should have some information there. So that's just, that's the only thing I have. I will take care of that. Thank you. Yeah, it's not, it's not the calendar of meetings. It's the calendar of events in, in Rush that is blank. Thank you. Who else would like to comment? There's anyone on Zoom? Um, this is Councilwoman Amber Corbin. Please type in the chat and either the town clerk or myself will see your name. 
and we will ask you to turn your video and your microphone on. Town Clerk, at this point, I do not have anyone on my chat, do you? Well, then we'll have to move on. All right. And uh, we can now seek the approval of minutes on deck as the April 27th, the May 9th, and the May 11th minutes. Would anyone propose a resolution for approval? I will move to approve the town board meeting minutes of March. I'm sorry, not March, April 13th. April 13th? April 27th. Yeah, this one. April 27th, 2022, as submitted by Town Clerk Busey. Is there a second? I'll second that. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Bolivar? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. May 9th? I so move to approve the town board minutes of May 9th, 2022, as submitted by town clerk Busey. Can I'll I, second that. Can I, can I just ask a question? Do we have to have workshop in there since it wasn't an actual town board meeting? It was a workshop on the 9th? We should. Oh. You, you, I'm you're, just asking. You're just saying add the identifier of workshop. I'll just say town board workshop. Okay. Right, because it wasn't a regular town board. I meeting. move to approve the town board workshop minutes of May 9th, 2022, as submitted by town clerk Busey. I'll second it. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Wilmer? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. And now we can go on to the minutes of May 11th. Okay, I'll read that one. I shall move to approve the town board meeting minutes of May 11th, 2022, as submitted by Town Clerk Bucci. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman McCormick? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Wilmer? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. Thank you. And now Councilperson Morelli will educate us on the approval of abstract. Okay. Um, I move, having reviewed all vouchers on abstract 5-2 of May 25, 2022, authorized payment totaling 40,706.60, which includes fund AA for the general fund, for 33,30203, fund DA Highway for $640.22, and fund LL Library for $6,764.35. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Wilbur? Aye. Supervisor QC? Hi. I do have one question on the uh, Wisniewski Law. That's all reimbursable by. Uh, That's correct. Fund. Yep. It, 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 not all, but 99% of it. Uh, that's that's all uh, escrow yeah. funds. Um, we now have a public hearing. The purpose uh, for the purpose of amending chapter six and chapter 12065 regarding the Environmental Conservation Board and providing administrative assistance there too. The table is open for discussion, whoever would like to lead it. Are we going to take comment first, Supervisor? The general public and on Zoom? Well, uh, we can. I, I was thinking if they heard what the board had to say, they could come and after. Either way, will work for me. Well, if you want us to comment on it first, um, I think this is a step in the right direction for the conservation board. They could use they could use some help with taking the minutes and 
getting things set up as far as the technology goes. I, I agree. agree. I think uh, both the town clerk and the deputy clerk were willing to provide that assistance. So I don't really see any issue with making that happen for them. I agree. So do I, they deserve it. They're a board and they deserve the support. I agree. Uh, and I'll just add, I was the liaison to that board for a couple of years. And uh, not always, but there were times when I saw the difficulty of <coughs> trying to take the notes and participate in the board uh, meeting at the same time. And it was challenging at times. Um, I'd like to now open it up to the audience, either on Zoom or in attendance here. Would anyone like to comment? I do not have anyone in Zoom. Tom Clark, do you have anyone in Zoom chat? No. All right, then uh, I will read the resolution. That's in the old in the new business, the res oh. reading of the resolution. In the new business. So I, just to conform to what our agenda says, I would suggest that if, if you wish, you may close the public hearing and then move on to the next item of business and catch up All with the right. resolutions um, when, when, when called for on the agenda. Now, do you are you suggesting we do that under new business completely, or do it now after we close the public hearing? My suggestion is to close the public hearing and then take care of the adoption resolution in new business when we get to that portion. Of okay, thank you very much. So I declare the public hearing closed, considering that there are no other comments, and uh, we will move on to the next public hearing for the purpose of amending the town zoning map to create a solar energy system overlay district for the Helios project at 540 Honey Eye Falls, number six road. Can we do that already supervisor since it's supposed to be 730? We did, because we had three, we did them 15 minutes apart. So I think I see our town attorney shaking. <laughs> which, which way is he shaking? I'm nodding in agreement. With All you. right, and we can do that. I would suggest a order of business that you can take care All of the right. officer's reports. You don't want us to get out of sequence, do you? I'm trying to keep us on track. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> then we can start with the reports from the town board members, and we will go to Deputy Supervisor Corbin for her report. Thank you, Supervisor. I attended the LWRP steering committee meeting with the Department of State. Um, town attorney um, Howell was there as well via, um, what was it, Teams, not Zoom. Uh, they We discussed the consistency review law, which we will be discussing with the board and the public uh, very, very soon. I'll be giving more update um, at the end of the meeting on the LWRP process. I attended the planning board meeting via Zoom last night. I attended the conservation board meeting to assist with technology and handed the reins over to Councilman Chase, but mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you won't need to. <laughs> we'll see. Um, have had a lot of phone calls, emails, and meetings with residents on issues they want, wanted to discuss and share their views and opinions with. And I want to remind everyone, we uh, have scheduled the town board another workshop. We're going to start meeting every first Monday of the month to get our work done. And that next one coming up for our workshop is June 6th at 7 p.m. Um, and just on a personal note, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge what happened in Buffalo and Texas and uh, my heart goes out to them and everyone. That's all. I agree. And there, uh, can I just piggyback on that and say that there is a local organization, uh, a uh, 
organization that is organized to seek to end the violence. Uh, they put up a collection, uh, notified us of a collection of food goods that they are collecting on behalf of the Buffalo tragedy. And I asked Catherine Hankins today to put that on the website. If anyone would like to contribute to the Buffalo uh, Relief Fund, look on our website. If you can't find it, call one of us. We'll help you get there. Thank you. How about Councilwoman Morelli? Thank you. Uh, so yes, on Thursday, May 19th, I met with the chairpersons of the planning board and zoning board of appeals to work on fee structures and application procedures and get feedback and uh, you know go through all of those forms and schedules um, in an effort to move it along and, and create some um, more structure and continuity between those two. Um, on Tuesday, May 24th, I attended the planning board meeting as the liaison to that board. Um, a public hearing was held regarding a subdivision of land on Woodruff Road, and it was uh, approved with conditions. Uh, they also had an informal hearing regarding the Fieldstone subdivision on Town Line Road and East River Road. Uh, the applicant was advised that he needed to reapply, go through the whole procedure um, again because of the long expanse of time between when they first came before the board and then it, it, a lot of things expired. Um, discussions were held uh, by the planning, planning board members regarding flag lots. Uh, they have decided to hold a joint meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals to discuss flag lots in the town um, and come up with you know, some, something to follow regarding those things. Uh, they also discussed application forms and the packet and the fee structure. Um, and planning board member Carl Ost did a presentation on EV charging stations, which is very interesting. So they're looking into some towns are already passing codes to address charging stations. And so they're going to look at it um, along with our, our attorney. So. Uh, yesterday, I also attended a webinar, participated in a webinar put on by the New York Department of State regarding consolidated funding applications for various grants. Um, I sent the information to uh, Amber Corbin because one of them um, also applied to the LWRP. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. How about Councilperson Wollaver? Uh, I attended the library board meeting uh, last Tuesday. The president of the board is uh, going to be moving from Rush, so he resigned his position. Uh, Julia Letterman, as the assistant or as the deputy chair, was will be taking his place. And they have a vacancy, which they're probably going to be uh, advertising for very soon. They also, <clears throat> this was two days after the Buffalo shooting, and they were wondering about some kind of active shooter training for town hall personnel, something we should look into to prepare, because you, I'm, it's, just, it's terrible. You just don't know. It could be anywhere. So we should look into some kind of active students uh, shooter <clears throat> training. I think Pam has said that uh, the sheriff's been here before. Yes, he was in a staff meeting. We should try to see if we can do something with that. And uh, I talked to Rusty Miller about turning the uh, Northwest Cemetery over to the town. He's going to talk it over with the board, see what they think. Hope we get uh, have to call him back and see what kind of <laughs> they have a, a meeting coming up early next month so get some kind of determination and that's it okay thank you very much no 
<laughs> There's four minutes left. No, Mr. Chase. Oh. You skipped him. Mr. Chase. I haven't got to him yet. <laughs> he was feeling really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't escape. No, I, I I thought you were just saving the best for last. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite, not quite. But we're getting close. Got in trouble for something. Okay, so um, I attended the conservation board meeting for this month. Um, I think they're looking forward to getting some administrative support if we so choose to do that. Um, one other thing that was brought up by that board regarding um horseshoe solar was that there's eight acres of town property on Gola Road. And they were thinking that if it is not already there, maybe we should make sure that we get some sort of easement to be able to access that eight acre parcel oh, the, uh, yeah. that the town owns to make sure that we're, mm. we're able to get back there. Flanlock, we have no, oh. there's no way to get to that yeah. piece of property without crossing our GE or Right, so they were, interesting. yeah, they, their thought was, you do know, we if, if we're gonna do that? something moving yeah. forward that, with that, then we should make sure that we get a, an easement <laughs> get to access that, wow. that property. Um, and the following Saturday after the conservation board meeting, I was able to attend the past officers banquet for the department. Um, that was a really good time. I, I enjoyed being there. I got to see some people that I hadn't seen in a while and uh, they did a, a nice ceremony recognizing the, the firemen that, that had passed away last year and gave them a plaque. And I think they're going to be dedicating a bench to, to him as well for, for his family and for the public to see. So that was, that was really good. And I, he was a close personal friend of mine. So I was glad to be able to be there and, and see his family when that happened. So, so I was happy about that. Um, then I also attended the fire commissioners meeting for this month. Um, they are going to be posting um, for two part-time positions for an EMT to be part of the fire department to help serve our community better and be able to have somebody there to be able to get out on an ambulance and get out and help people when, when it really matters. So um, they're going to be posting those paid positions. Uh, two, yeah, two part-time paid positions so that they, there's always somebody there between, well, I, they're still kind of working out the time schedule a little bit, but I think it's, they're thinking between like eight and four, or eight and five, something like that when our volunteers are, are typically working. So, and the other thing that they were looking to do was perhaps have, um, they just, they were looking to get Doug's info the commissioners wanted to have that so I can look that up and send that over to them but I think they were happy to have that fire marshal and code enforcement position filled and I informed them of what you told me that Doug was willing to when or if it happens that he would step in as the emergency preparedness officer as well so that makes them happy yep they were good with that that's great so that's all I have to report thank you very much busy all now, busy. how about Town Clerk Busey? The only thing I have is that um, we did, um, <clears throat> with the assistance of um, John Limbeck, get a, lap, not a laptop, a um, tablet for Doug, and I'll be setting everything up with IPS and all the technology that he needs on that in order to work outside. Thank and, you. Yes. We got business cards as well. I just asked him today and he informed me that you ordered them. Mm -hmm. Great. How about our attorney, David Howe? Um, just a few things. As Amber mentioned, um, I participated in the LWRP meeting with the state, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, I have prepared a uh, proposed video conferencing local law that would allow us to make it a little bit easier for us to conduct public meetings uh, via teleconferencing technologies. Um, you and Amber have already seen a draft of that, and uh, um, there are no further comments from, uh, from two of you, which I understand there are not. It will circulate that to the rest of the board so we can have the next public meeting. Um, 
just say that instead of publishing that the public hearing is that the appropriate time for the subsequent meeting for us to review that in public and adopt that. That's it. Thank you very much. How about our engineer from MRB, Sherman? Would you like to speak about anything? No report at this time. That's acceptable. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I, 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 that's what I thought it said. So we're going to go back to the 7:30 public hearing. Hearing that was the for the purpose of amending the town zoning map to create a solar energy system overlay district for Helios at 540 Honey Eye Falls, Number Six Road. Would anyone like to lead that discussion? Would anyone like to explain what a overlay district does? Well, this is for the next negative declaration, right? Of the project. That's okay. The seeker, the seeker. No, not, not exactly. Okay, all right, help uh, us out. Me, yeah, let me explain what we're doing here tonight. We have two related but separate things going on. One is a public hearing, which is a we'll hearing now, to actually amend the zone, official zoning map for an overlay district. Uh, the actual resolution to effectuate that change will not take place until after uh, Helios, assuming you do establish the district, it will not take place until after all other local approvals are, are, are obtained. So for example, planning board, site plan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're sort of doing that tonight to get it out of the way so that we can deal with it at a, at a later point whenever that happens. Later on tonight, we will be considering, if the board wishes, the secret negative declaration that MRB uh, has prepared. Um, and assuming you adopt that, then you will then, the next step in that process will be to consider a resolution to actually create the overlay district. The creation of that overlay district, as I just said, is subject to um, and conditioned upon Helios getting their approvals from the planning board. So in other words, you may establish the district tonight, but it's conditional so that if they ultimately do not, for whatever reason, get their uh, approvals from, this, from the planning board, then that district will not continue to exist without a project to support it. I mean, we won't take any further action. But tonight's resolution regarding the creation of the district will effectively uh, conclude your portion of the review of that project for now. And then it'll go, it'll go to the planning board for site plan. Um, and then it'll, it'll come back for the creation of the actual for the amendment of the zoning map. And my apologies, Supervisor. I had what you had, and then we jumped ahead, and I was at a different part on the agenda. So I'm back where you're at. So my apologies. You don't need to apologize. <laughs> we are all in this together, and we've met, had a steady stream of these applications in the past. Um, just so I'm clear, David, we haven't done one of these overlay districts in quite a while. And my memory is that all of the previous zoning regulation for that district that is going to receive an overlay remain intact. Is that correct? That's right. An overlay district overlays the existing zoning. So the old overlay, so the existing zoning regulations will apply. It's just that there will be additional regulations that are um uh, to the solar project itself that are unique to that particular use thank you would anybody in our live audience like to comment uh, sir stand up name address honestly uh, my name is hans schmidt i'm 119 rush west west road um I didn't realize I'd get an opportunity twice to voice my support for this tonight. But I would just add that um, in addition to your diligence and patience, which I noticed, 
I also wanted to compliment the company GWIPS and their representatives. I think over the last several years, they've been very professional, very patient, and you know, they've come back in good faith with all of, I believe, all of the things that we've asked for, including this last one. I think they moved some of the panels around to enable a screen to be put in that past uh, Western edge, I believe. And, uh, I, of course, I don't know because I'm not party to this, but I, I would bet that they've uh, complied with, I think it was you or one of you that suggested how they could move it. It's a good idea. And I think they probably will have done that or have already done it. So as far as the shielding goes, yeah, I think there's two rows of trees and everything. So it looks okay to me. I mean, so I just, again, urge you and I, I would point out that they've done everything very professionally. And uh, I don't see any sly uh, behavior in the book. I think it's an honest business. It is a business, of course. We're a free enterprise country. So there is profits to be made, but I don't think we should let that cloud um, that it's good for us. You know, it's good for the community and it's good for the planet. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone on Zoom who would like to comment? I do not have anyone, Town Clerk. Anyone? So we can go ahead and read the resolution. No, I would close, close the, the public hearing. Close the public hearing. And move on to the next item of business. We'll catch up with the resolution. <clears throat> oh, under new business. Sorry. Yes, you may speak. <laughs> and she wanted to say something. Mary oh, Ellen. I so didn't see you wave to me. Here. I did notice, and I wanted to point out, in the last month, possibly two months, including the last hearing, I honestly do not recall a single neighbor of that area complain about this in, in a public hearing. I, I can only think of one person, and I, I had to look at the Zoom recording of that public meeting, where somebody had a question but not a complaint. So in all of this, I have not heard one neighbor. Could be wrong, but that's my memory. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, would you like to comment? Hi, Mary Ann Rizzo, 25 Stone Road. I think I'll try to speak up because I know that when I'm on Zoom listening to the citizens that you can't always hear them. So. I will I'll speak louder, louder than I usually do. Well, I just want to uh, thank the board for uh, being persistent with uh, Helios and 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 uh, working on the screening. Um, a number, a few of us have come to the town in our public comments, and, and we cared about the screening. I especially think it's important so that the community could buy into solar power, and um, and I hope that it, it's been reconciled in, in the way that. That's acceptable, you know, to the residents, especially the primary stakeholders who are the closest to that site. So I really want to thank the board for going over it and asking for the complete screening and trying to, you know, make sure that happens. So I really thank you for that diligence. And I think we're going to have a better, a better product there. Um, <clears throat> the other issue that I don't think is resolved is the PFAS issue. And I realize it's, it's something that in our community, we've been learning about it for maybe the last two years, and it's not in our zoning. But, um, you know, I've been learning that, and I did, just looked, looked it up and found it. It does have a, a PFAS, has an increased risk of miscarriage. It's dangerous for pregnant women. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is the some of the, many of the panels, may, I don't think they all do, have a PFAS um, in their panels. Dangerous for pregnant women, causing hypertension, lower birth weights, increase in kidney cancer, testicular cancer, liver damage, increase asthma, and uh, um, other other um, health problems. So I, I think, if possible, I know it's not in our zoning yet. I think it's your intention to put it in the zoning at some point, but um, because it's not in our zoning, I don't know what we do with that, but. You, one might say, well, you know, if chances are it's not going to leach out of the out of the panels, and and hopefully that's true. I think that that's probably true. But 
But because we're a part of this and there's you know hundreds and hundreds of panels, even at, at the time they're decommissioned, it's still bad for the environment. So I really don't wanna be, have any part of anything like that coming into rush. And I don't know what we can do about it at this point, because uh, maybe you know, maybe you've addressed this enough. And I'm just gonna ask Helios who, who seemed to be a good partner, um, if, if they could have a, a courtesy to our town and choose the, or, or maybe there's something um, legally we could do about the PFAS. And, but if they could have a courtesy or, to our town and, um, and not use any panels that have the PFAS. Thank you. Thank you. I have to turn to someone who knows more about this stuff than I do. You who? Yes, sir. Uh, isn't the PA, PFAS, we've had many, many, many discussions about that. Uh, especially from outsiders who want to advise us. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we would put to a public hearing and uh, eventually a resolution to decide one way or another about panels coming into rush? If they were coated with PFAS, uh, we could put on a moratorium against them like we did similar to the batteries? Well, I know the five of us talked about that and that that was something that we were all in agreement on so that is something that not sure how to move forward with that i'm not sure if the planning board can do anything in their review or that's what i was wondering if it might have been more if it might come to planning board so the there's two sort of uh, two sort of um, issues or, or considerations the first one is regarding the Helios project itself, and Sherman can certainly jump in here. Uh, in the course of our seeker review, we did discuss PFAS and the applicant did, we did identify as a potentially moderate to large impact and the applicant responded to that by indicating that they were committed not to provide any solar panels that had that um, uh, in the product. Uh, so for the purposes of this, and that was acceptable to this board so in the course of our review. So as far as that issue is concerned, I think that has been Address, address and resolved. As far as uh, going forward, we could either do one of two things. One is to uh, codify that as a prohibition uh, in our code, um, or um, just as effectively, we could address it every time and indicate that we're not going to accept that as part of a, during the course of the seeker review, potential um, impact. Uh, so you can do it one of, one of both ways. And, and also, uh, just to be clear too this can be a condition of approval as well right uh so that if there are found to be any panels that do contain this uh chemical substance that that is a violation of a condition of approval thank you thank you for citing that i wanted to make sure that the residents heard it because if there's just one resident who's uncertain about it I, I would like to straighten that out and thank you for your help. It, it's certainly something that may well be brought up by the, the public. Certainly may well have the opportunity to bring that up again during the course of the public, of the planning boards hearings that they have on, on the permit or the site plan. Yeah. Thank you. Excuse me, Supervisor Cusey. Yes, ma'am. I do have uh, John Morelli would like to speak. Can we fit them in before the next public hearing? We can't. Pardon me? All right, John. I can allow you to speak. Hello? Let me see if I can find him. Hi, Julie. Oh, there he is. His video is on. John, you're you're muted. Clicking the unmute button. Could you hear me? Hear yes. me now. Okay, so yeah, quickly. Um, I, I know you have something coming up. Um, my concern is, uh, you know, I, I I really really appreciate what you guys have done uh, with regards to Helios. I think you're uh, holding them to the fire with respect to what the town 
board expects, what the town expects, and they are they seem to be responding favorably. Uh, but you know, I am very very concerned about the whole concept of visibility, whether you could see these things or not. Be, not only because of Helios, but because of anybody coming down the road. You know, we've seen a lot of, hey, Forefront has done this, so we want to be able to cash in on that and so on and so forth. There was a lot of, um, I, I don't know what the term for it is, but, you know, where they look at previous uh uh, precedents, I guess, and say, hey, you did this here, so we should be able to do it here, and so on and so forth. And my concern is, uh, and, and I'm very pleased with what you've done with Helios, the requirements you have set in place. I, I don't know whether that will work, and I'm sure the planning board will uh, resolve that, but just I just want to keep in mind that if in any way, shape, or form, we decide that what Helios did regarding visibility is okay to see a little, uh, then everyone else down the line is going to come back and say, hey, you know, you let it go for these guys. So uh, I, I don't know where to go from this. I'm, I'm just, I'm pleased with what you've done. I, I accept with what you've done and I think it's, it's uh, viable. And I think you've made the best effort to let a local resident to our town, uh, you know, apply for this and, and hopefully succeed in locating this place. But, you know, back when, when the planning board was, looking at these things, we realized that there were certain parcels in the town that would not qualify for uh, such approvals because of the, the, the grade, because of they were at the top of a slope and so on and so forth. Um, so I, I think the work you've done with Helios is, is, is remarkable and it is right on target um, and that you know the planning board now we'll have to address the remaining issues, but I I just want to point out that the whole uh, the town law regarding screening is essential for our future moving down the road. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, John. I uh, I will close the public hearing. We will uh, go back to our new business. Uh, We've got one more. Yep. The 745 public hearing. And, uh, but I got to go back to the new business before I go to the next public hearing, don't I? No. Otherwise, you yell at me. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can now open the new public hearing or the next public hearing, if you will, and that is the, uh, <clears throat> the public hearing for the purpose of amending chapter 30, chapter 52 and 58 of the town code regarding farming and fences for commercial farms. Now, I, I think that that should be commercial and non-commercial because they are both affected in that. That'll work. So uh, as we did last time at the last public hearing, we started off with a board discussion and I look forward to Dan and Dan leading that discussion and the rest of us can get in on it and then we can have Public comment. Um, so I don't I, I don't know how much more discussion that the, the board needs to have. I think that we did a, a good job at the workshop going over a lot of this. Um, I agree. I, I just don't know. And, and uh, yep. So I'm just that's where I'm going to leave it. And if anyone else has anything to say on it, then we can we can do that now. 
uh, well, one of the major things that we, we did in it was this, this <coughs> differentiate between commercial and non-commercial farms and uh, <coughs> adjusted the use of fencing for the two different type of farms. Basically, uh, non-commercial farms less than ten thousand dollars worth of income would uh, have to apply for permit for formerly not permitted fences, and uh, commercial farms would be able to put them up without a permit. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment? I am sharing the screen of the proposed changes for people at home and anyone here. They can, if you've got good eyesight, you can see it. <laughs> All right, before I close that hearing, this hearing, I just want to make a comment that I heard uh, that a resident was critical of the process used to update these codes and get to the point where we can vote on it. And I think that's a shame because uh, the person was talking without knowledge. And I can tell you from my own personal experience that this board has worked very diligently to get this code changed and to make it favorable for both agricultural producers in town and residents in town. And I'll stop there. And close the hearing. Oh, you gotta let, open it to the public. Yeah. Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. I wanna go to your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so is uh, anyone in attendance here in this room or on Zoom? that would like to make a comment. And if you're on Zoom, please type in the chat and the town clerk or I will call on you. I have no one in Zoom world. I do not. I don't see Sherman, that's why I wanted to close it. <laughs> All right, so we will close the public hearing. And we can read the resolutions to vote now. Did you want to go over old business first? Just stay in. Well, that's what I'm asking uh, he's David. A, he's a stickler for us following our agenda. We can now move on to old business. All right. Uh, the old business that we have is proposed new rates for building fee schedule. And um, Supervisor, I at our last town board meeting, it was on the agenda. And my recollection, and I think even in the minutes, I saw that we said we were going to work on it at our workshop on June 6th. If, the, if we're not in agreement with that, then I'm fine with that. Now um, that you mentioned, I'm pretty sure that's what yeah, we talked about. We John, did. is that what you recall from that meeting also? I did circulate the draft. Mm -hmm. Yep, to the board. Um, but it is the board's desire to pursue this on June 6th. Is that what I'm hearing? I can go either way. Right, yeah. Yes, along with the next yeah, agricultural code section. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So. Reschedule it for June 6th. Morelli, can you mute yourself, please? I have you on uh, your video off. Can you just mute yep. from here? I did. Okay. Only when you're ready. I'm ready. I want you to be ready to tell me. <laughs> um, I think we can move on to schedule a public hearing for the revision of farm stands code 127 in residential 
and residential district farming activities? No, I think we're here. Number one, new business. The resolution from our public hearings that David told us we could then do under new business. Uh, yes, you are now under new business and you may, um, the first item on my new business agenda is resolution to adopt speaker. For yes, for Helios. that's what I have. And would anyone like to lead that discussion? Well, we, we were given the part three from MRB determination of significance, evaluation of the magnitude and importance, as well as the full environmental assessment form part three. Um, on that, um, I, I looked through it. What did all of you say? I don't have any negative comments. I think the most important part is um, looking at it at Appendix A, that um, the, the board uh, feels that that accurately reflects uh, the, the process, because uh, that's more or less what we're trying to establish is these things that were on this Appendix A were deemed to be a moderate to large impact. And then there was mitigation that was offered by the applicant. And that's what this is to outline as uh, part of the board's review. So there is a, a three page resolution for determination of significance. I, David, should every word be read on that resolution? Or can it be a preview? I can read it out if you want me to. You, you, you may read it. Um, if there are parts that you think and would like to. Uh, well, if I'm going to go for it, I'll go for the whole thing. For it. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all in writing. It's part of the public record already. Reading it is a convenience for, for everybody, but you certainly may choose to do how you read it as you wish. I, I oh, will boy. defer to the deputy supervisor <laughs> to make that decision. I, I read oh, through Lord. it. I read through it and I don't know if I want to. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to hold the attendees responsible to listen to it. But go ahead. What would the board so choose? A summary or a, <laughs> a summary of that? Then I wouldn't know which part to summarize. So I, I guess a, a summary of the resolution includes the process of, of the board accepting uh, the application, uh, determining it is a type one action under the Sikora mm -hmm. uh, law and uh, going through the process of uh, the application being revised, being put through the process of coordination. And as a result of that coordination, a review of the part two was done. And as a result of that part two, uh, the part three was uh, prepared. Um, Resolution ultimately is stating that uh, as a re result of the review of the part, that no uh, significant moderate to large impacts are left unmitigated, mm -hmm. um, thus authorizing a negative declaration of uh, significance and authorizing the town supervisor to sign the uh, EIF part three. Very good. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> like you said. <laughs> good job, Amber. 
Thank you. <laughs> I'm a speed reader. Any discussion? So basically the um, town board has reasonably concluded the following impacts and it goes through uh, 12 impacts. And that is what is a summary of the, the part, part, two, yeah. part two? That's correct. Okay, which we which completed. Yes. And, and so this is just summarizing that. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, like I said, uh, it, you know, it refers, like I said, to the part three. This part three would also be after, uh, if the board so chooses to declare a neg negative declaration, it will be uh, signed by the town supervisor. And then we would uh, take a copy of that and post it on to the, um, EM, the New York State uh, DEC's EMB uh, publication, which is allows for a public comment period if people so choose. Um, that gets posted every Wednesday, and this would go on that publication two Wednesdays from now because you have to submit by Wednesday, and unfortunately, we're at that point right now. So. Do you need the last two be a further results read then for the official part, or can we just would that be helpful? All right, so be it further resolved based upon the information and analysis above and the supporting documentation referenced above, the proposed action will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts. Be it finally resolved that the town board does hereby make a determination of non significance on the proposed development, and the town board chairman is hereby directed to sign the full environmental assessment form. Part three. I think that should be town board supervisor, shouldn't it? Yes. Oh, town board supervisor is hereby directed to sign the full environmental assessment form part three and issue the negative declaration as evidence of the town board's determination. The above resolution was offered by Councilwoman Corbin and seconded by I'll second it. Councilman Wolliver at a regular scheduled town board meeting on May 25th, 2022. Following discussion, a voice vote was recorded. Councilman Chase. Aye. Councilman Corbin. Aye. Councilman Morelli. Aye. Councilman Wilmer. Aye. Supervisor Cusey. Aye. Are we done? Yeah. That item, yes. We are done with with that number one under new business. All right. Uh, we need a re resolution to create the overlay. No. No. Yes. Yes, yeah. we do need a resolution for the overlay district for the Helios Energy Development at 540 Honey Falls. Number six road. Can I just ask for a point of clarification? I know in reading everything, the 239M went out to the county a while ago, but was this a new 239M that had to go out based on the change or we no, were okay? Because the, 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 the configuration of the district changed somewhat, but the fundamental nature of the application, which is a five megawatt um, okay. solar farm in that area, approximating that size or that configuration they're not really as concerned about configuration as they are about the project as a whole okay so i don't think that either the second 239 energy. so i i have some questions on this resolution and i, I think i printed out <clears throat> the most recent copies of things um so the third whereas on june 15 2021 the planning board recommended to the town board that the project application be approved. And that's not my recollection. I don't think it was that simple. I think they had a lot of comments back to the town board and that they weren't approving anything. It's a, re it's a referral. 
Yes, it's advisory opinions. Okay, but I, I guess that's not my recollection. I would have to look at that. Yes. And I apologize, I didn't go back and pull that out, but my re recollection of reading that in the past mm -hmm. of what the planning board said at that time was um, something that was uh, more complex in what they looked at and that they weren't making a recommendation at that time. I mean, we are gonna refer it back to them. Is that not so? Yeah, give me one second, I can. Okay. Pull up the resolution. And while you're doing this, David, I, I will agree. There were many things in the planning board report back to the town board that they said to be determined or they had questions for clarification, such as screening and things like that was my recollection, but I, I don't recall. So, yeah, so the just for our discussion, this whereas is not a it's just an acknowledgement that we followed our process of referring the application to the planning board for their review and they return on june 15th they returned their review of that back to the town board um, and in that report um, they indicated that they resolved that the application should be recommended for the creation of the overlay district after a st substantial study and verification, and they had a list of additional considerations. Um, and so the our purpose, you know, obviously we've gone through that deliberative process already. So that that whereas is not intended to 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 capture all of the things that they said we needed to look into is just really to acknowledge the fact that we complied with our process and review and they returned the report back to us. The report itself is a matter of public record, it doesn't have to be, can, but doesn't have to be included as with this. I mean, can we add some verbiage to that effect that they had a lot of conditions in that and it wasn't clear cut it, it, they did send it back here, but it was, you know, like good to go. You know, it was, they wanted us to really look at a bunch of conditions, uh, which yes, we did. We, and we addressed a lot of issues that, you know, we are a regular, you know, are able to move past on, you know, being satisfied that things will be mitigated in one form or another. But I, I guess, I would like it to be this to me, if I were just coming back to this or anybody looking at this, it's like, wait, what, you know, the town board, the, the planning board said that, you know, good to go. Um, that's how I would read it. And I guess I would, I would like a little bit more words in there that it came right. back with conditions so why don't we change the wording of that whereas to indicate that i mean they're not conditions because that's not the term that they used either okay they, they um so i would suggest uh, or offer that the language say that on june, whereas on june 15 2021 the planning board um returned their report to the town board um uh, stating, uh, recommending that the application be recommended for the creation of the overlay district right. after further study and verification of certain items as contained in the report, and then attach it to this resolution. Just so it's, it's, I would feel better about I, that. Thank I you. I agree because when when I've been doing a lot of research on other things, and when you're researching minutes and something comes up. Sure. where it just says the project was approved by them. It doesn't say overlay district. It's not the project. It's just the overlay district. Thank you. I hope you got all that for the town clerk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sometimes um, Attorney Howe's voice doesn't carry and is it recorded it's clear. Agree. Oh, to go, go back. And From the owl. Yep. Yeah. Um, the other question I had here is that I thought, and maybe you can help me find it on this resolution, that the town board, we are considering uh, moving forward with uh, granting an overlay district 
provided the planning board finds nothing else that we missed or that we didn't address everything that the planning board might address. And in which case, if they don't grant approval, it's null and void then. Um, yeah, so if that is in the uh, condition number two or and then one. Uh, right, not two, but condition number one on the, at the bottom of page three. Where it says they have to get all local right. permits and things like that. So okay, that I'm sorry. Plan. Where am I looking? Can you page three. Page three, number two. Right there. One, the applicant shall obtain all other necessary on the third page. But it didn't compliance it with Seeger. Okay. Number one, the app shall obtain all other necessary local state. So my, I had to read it multiple times as well and see if I understand it. So the planning board approval for a site plan and special permit is what the applicant must obtain under the local permit. Yes. Are you saying that correct? Well, it's a local approval. It's a local approval. Yeah. Um, can we be more specific? And again, I, think I don't want to. It's better to be broader because being broad covers. Okay, broad. Small. Yes. And but I want broad because I have no idea what the planning board is <laughs> going to look right. at or how they analyze this. That's that's a separate board, right. independent. Um, and I'd like to make reference to the planning board, you know, still subject to planning board review and approvals. Okay, it, is that unreasonable? I think I would I, like to see yeah, that. I can insert at the end of that sentence, um, you know, um, approvals required for the project, including but not limited to approvals uh, by the planning board. Is that perfect? That'd be fine. Okay. I, uh, do you agree? Is that good? Yep. Thank you. That's what I was looking for, and I couldn't find it. That's right. That's all the changes. That's that was one of my concerns. Okay. Any others? Nope. Those are two good ones. You're seeking a second. Uh, second is amended. A second is amended. Well, we didn't read any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he read it. No, 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 that was the other thing. Oh, okay then. Maybe it should be read. Maybe it should be read. I mean, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. We are changing zoning in the town. This is a big deal. Anyone want to read it? All right, I'll go for it. <laughs> you caught on fast. <laughs> Resolution of the Town Board of the Town of Rush regarding the creation of a solar energy systems overlay district for Helios Energy LLC slash Rush Solar Farm One LLC's development of a tier three solar energy system at 540 Honey Eye Falls Road number six. Whereas Helios Energy LLC slash Rush Solar Farm One LLC, the applicant, has applied to the town of Rush, the town, for the development of a five megawatt tier three solar energy system on approximately 25.4 acres, the project site, of a 101.5 acre <coughs> parcel at 540 Honey Eye Falls Road, number six, Rush, New York. Um, referred to as the property and the foregoing proposed project as the project. And whereas the town board of the town of Rush referred the project application to the town of Rush planning board for its review and recommendation under the town zoning law. Can I just put in here a preliminary review? For it. its preliminary review, I would like to add that. Um, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and recommendation under the town zoning law. And whereas on June 15, the planning board 
recommended or returned their report and as amended for our discussion earlier. Uh, whereas on February 9th, 2022, the town board held a properly noticed public hearing with respect to the proposed solar energy systems overlay district application in accordance with the requirements of the town solar energy system zoning law and notice was posted as required by law. And whereas the town referred the project to the Monroe County Planning Department as required by section 239 M of the general municipal law, which provided comments on February 15, 2022. And whereas on May 25, 2022, in accordance with the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, Article 8 of the Environmental Conservation Law and the regulations adopted pursuant thereto at 6 NYC RR Part 617, as amended, collectively, collectively referred to as CEQA, the town board satisfied the requirements of CEQA with respect to the project by adopting a resolution, a negative declaration, and whereas all persons at the hearing desiring to speak on the matter were heard, all correspondence on the matter was read, and all comments and statements that were received during the public hearing and or at other duly held meetings of the town board were considered by the town board. And whereas the town board has considered the recommendations contained, contained in the June 15, 2021 planning board resolution, and the applicant has made revisions to project, which the which addresses the town boards and the planning boards concerns relating to the criteria set forth in the town zoning law for the creation of a solar energy systems overlay district. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the town board that each of the whereas clauses in this resolution is incorporated by reference as specific findings of this resolution and shall have the same effect as other findings herein and the application for the creation of a solar energy systems overlay district for the project is hereby approved. The town board has considered the recommendations contained in the June 16, 2021 planning board resolution and the additional factors relating to the creation of a solar energy systems overlay district under the town zoning law. The reasons supporting this approval include, one, location, arrangement, and appearance of the solar energy system. The solar energy system has been designed and placed on the project site in a way that is compatible with the surrounding landscape and neighborhood. The project site is located in an R30 residential district and in compliance with the town solar energy system zoning law. The project as currently designed does not require any variances and is consistent with the landscaping, buffering, height, acreage, lot coverage, and density limitation contained in the town zoning law. Of course, pursuant to mitigation, I'd like to add, pursuant to the mitigation um, as uh, outlined previously discussed, under CEQA, et cetera, because it wasn't, they did not meet all of that, but they are going to address it. So I need that clear. The project site is located in a rural agricultural area of the town and while residential and farmland uses are nearby, the project site is over 900 feet from the nearest residence and adjacent to Interstate 390 and Route 15 to the east. The applicant has worked with the town to modify the proposed screening and vegetation plan and siting of the proposed solar panels and has provided visual simulations from various points surrounding the project site, which collectively demonstrate that visual Im impacts have been mitigated and that project will not be visible from any scenic resource and that the project will have a minimal impact on the surrounding properties. Two. 
adequacy type and arrangement of screening slash landscaping constituting a visual buffer between adjacent uses and adjoining lands. The project proposes rows of screening trees. Um, I would say at least two rows, at least two rows of screening trees along the boundary of the project site. The project as currently designed is consistent with the landscaping and buffering limitations contained in the town zoning law. These will provide a visual buffer between adjacent uses and adjoining lands. Three, location and adequacy of open space. The project consists of the installation of an approximately 25.4 acre ground mounted solar energy generating facility on an approximately 101 acre parcel of land and the balance of the property shall not contain the solar energy system and shall remain as open space slash available agricultural use. The project site is small in scope and its location within the town combined with remaining agricultural land will protect the town's existing rural and open, open character. character. Four, projection of adjacent properties against glare, unsightliness or other objectionable features. Under the town zoning law, solar panels are required to have anti-reflective coating to reduce glare to the maximum extent practicable. The panels to be used for the project are smooth glass surface material with an anti-reflection coating. As previously stated, screening will be installed to provide a landscape buffer from adjacent properties. These features will minimize the potential for glare and unsightliness to adjoining properties and minimize visibility from residential uses in proximity to the project site. No lighting is proposed as part of the project. Five, compliance with CEQA. The town board reviewed documents relating to the impact of the project on the environment, received comments from the public and involved and in interested agencies about potential impacts and over a period of several meetings undertook a thorough and comprehensive review of the project and issued a negative declaration by resolution containing its reasoned elaboration that the project will result in no potential significant adverse environmental impacts requiring the preparation of an environmental impact statement. It is hereby further resolved that approval of the application for the creation of a solar energy systems overlay district for the project is subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall obtain all other necessary local state and feder federal permits and approvals required for the project. And we have, we're going to insert there something relative to planning board approvals. Including but not limited to any approvals required by the planning board. Okay, included but not limiting any approvals required by uh, the planning board. Upon receipt of all other necessary local, state and federal permits and approvals required for the project, the town shall amend the zoning map of the town of Rush to establish and define the boundaries of the solar energy systems overlay district. It is hereby further resolved that the town board directs the town clerk to maintain a copy of this resolution in the office of the town clerk in files that are readily accessible to the public and made available upon request, subject only to the limitations established by the Freedom of Information Law. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the members of the town board that each of the whereas clauses in this resolution is incorporated by reference as specific findings of this resolution and shall have the same Gina, effect. Sorry, that's that's um, an alternative. Well, oh, that was an alternative? alternative oh, because I read all of them. Yeah. So okay, so if, we skip that? Yeah, so if your resolution is, if you intend your resolution to be to approve this, then you would skip. You I got that. Everything. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. okay. 
The adoption of the foregoing resolution was moved by Jean Morelli, mm -hmm. seconded by I'll second that. Dan Chase, and duly put to vote, which resulted as follows. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Mulliver? Aye. Supervisor Tusi? Aye. All right. <laughs> Looking at me. <laughs> you may not move to the next one. <laughs> number three. Would you like to read number three? No, you're the supervisor. Only you read the. Yeah, okay. Motion. And the resolution to adopt the local law amending chapter eight and chapter 12065 regarding the Environmental Conservation Board and providing administrative assistance thereto. Do we have a res resolution? We've got it. Oh, no, I know why you want me to read it. Well, no, I, I will share my screen if somebody would like to. Would anyone else like the pleasure of reading this or would you like me to? Okay. Yeah. Resolution to adopt local law. Have the number on it. It'll be. No, don't worry about it because I'll make sure that okay. we do the right ones. We did two, so it might be three. Chapter eight and chapters twenty sixty-five regarding the Environmental Conservation Board and providing administrative assistance there too. <laughs> Whereas a resolution, a resolution was duly adopted by the rush town, by the town board of the town of Rush on the eleventh day of May, twenty twenty-two calling for a public hearing to be held by the Rushtown Board on the 25th day of May, 2022, at the Rushtown Hall, 5977 East Henrietta Road, Rush, New York, at 7.15 p.m. to hear all interested parties on a proposed law, local law to amend Chapter 8 and Chapter 120-65 regarding the Environmental Conservation Board and providing administrative assistance thereto. And where is the public? Whereas a, a notice of public hearing was duly advertised in accordance with law, and whereas the public hearing was duly held at the Rush Town Hall on the 25th day of May, 2022, at 715, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf or in opposition to said proposed law or any part thereof, and whereas the town board of the town of Rush, after due deliberation find it in the best interest of the town to adopt said local law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the adoption of the law, local law constitutes a type two action pursuant to New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, 6 New York CC CRR 617-5, for which no further environmental review is required. And it is further resolved that the town board hereby adopts local law later to amend chapter eight and chapter 120-65 of the town code regarding the environmental conservation board and providing administrative assistance thereto and set forth in the attached local law which is incorporated herein and made a part part hereof and be it further resolved the town clerk be and yearly and hereby is directed to en enter said local law into the minutes of the meeting and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the Secretary of State of the State of New York. Be it further resolved that said resolution and local law shall take effect immediately upon filing with the Office of the Secretary of State of the State of New York. This adopts the adoption of this foregoing resolution was moved by me, Dan Wolliver, seconded by. I'll second that. And Chase and Julie put to a vote, which results as follows. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbett? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Wilber? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. Thank you, Dan. We can now move on to number four. We need to schedule a vote for the revision of farm stand and signs town code 12028 and 127. 
residential district farming activities. I can read. Uh, Which one are you doing first? So I can pull it this up. This is the 120, 28. Is that signed? What's that? Yes. yes. Signed. Yeah. And is it? <coughs> um, so for the resolution number, Pam, just. Don't worry about it. Okay. A resolution to adopt local <laughs> law number, or we'll get that on there, of 2022 to amend chapter 120-28 and the table of permitted signs, 120 attachment two regarding permitted signs for farming activities. Whereas a resolution was duly adopted by the town board of the town of Rush on the 25th day of May, 2022, calling for a public hearing to be held at the Rush Town Board on, I believe it was at the 27th of April, mm -hmm. on the 27th day of April, 2022 at the Rush Town Hall, 5977 East Henrietta Road, Rush, New York at 7 p.m. to hear all interested parties on the proposed local law to amend chapter 120-28 and the table of permitted signs 120 attachment to of the town code regarding permitted signs for farming activities. And whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in accordance with the law, and whereas the public hearing was duly held at the Rush Town Hall on the 27th day of April, 2022 at 7 p.m. and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf of or in opposition to said proposed local law or any parts thereof. And whereas the proposed local law was referred to Mon Monroe County Planning and Development pursuant to New York State General Municipal Law 239M, which board returned the referral with comments. There were none. none. And whereas the town board of Town of Rush, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the town to adopt said local law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the adoption of local laws constitutes a type two action pursuant to New York State Environmental Quality Review Act 6NYCRR 617.5 for which no further environmental review is required. And it is further resolved that the town board hereby adopts said local law of 2022 to amend chapter 120-28 in the table of permitted signs, 120 attachment two of the town code regarding permitted signs for farming activities as set forth in the attached local law, which is incorporated herein and made part hereof. And be it further resolved that the town clerk be and hereby is directed to enter said local law into the minutes of this meeting and to give due notice of adoption of said local law to the Secretary of State, to the Secretary of State of the State of New York, be it further resolved that said resolution and local law shall take effect immediately upon its filing with the Office of the Secretary of State of the State of New York. The adoption of foregoing resolution was moved on by Dan Chase, seconded by... I'll second it. Dan Wolliver and duly put the vote, which resulted as follows. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Morali? Aye. Councilman Wolliver? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. The next one. So we're up. 120-7? Yes. Okay. I was going to ask you if you wanted to take a <laughs> breath. 
resolution to adopt local law number of 2022 to amend chapter 120-7 of the town code of the town of Rush regarding permitted farming activities and related structures. Whereas a resolution was duly adopted by the town board of the town of Rush on the 25th day of May, 2022, calling for a public hearing to be held by the Rush Town Board on the 27th day of April, 2022 at the Rush Town Hall, 5977 East Henrietta Road, Rush, New York at 7 p.m. to hear all interested parties on a proposed local law change to amend chapter 120-7 of the town code regarding permitted farming activities and related structures. Whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in accordance with the law and whereas the public hearing was duly held at the town hall on the 27th day of April, 2022 at 7 p.m. And all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf or in opposition to said proposed local law or any parts thereof. And whereas said proposed law was referred to the Monroe County Planning and Development pursuant to New York General Municipal Law 239-M, which board returned the referral with no comments. And whereas the town board of the town of Rush after due deliberation finds it the best interest of the town of Rush to adopt said local law. Now, therefore be it resolved that the adoption of the local law constitutes a type two action pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act 6NYCRR 617.5 for which no further environmental review is required. And it is further resolved that the town board hereby adopts said local law of 2022 to amend chapter 120-7 of the Rush Town Code regarding permitted farming activities and related structures as set forth in the attached local law, which is incorporated herein and made a part hereof and be it further resolved that the town clerk, clerk be and hereby is directed to enter said local law into the minutes of this meeting and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the secretary of state of the state of New York. Be it further resolved that said resolution and local law shall take effect immediately upon its filing with the office of the Secretary of State of the State of New York. The adoption of this foregoing resolution was moved by Dan Chase, seconded by I'll second. Dan Wolliver, and duly put to vote, which results resulted as follows. Councilman Chase? Aye. Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Morelli? Aye. Councilman Wilmer? Aye. Supervisor Husey? Aye. Would anyone like to take a quick breath? <laughs> Before we move on to Deputy Supervisor Corbin's update of the LWRP, which is the Local Waterfront Revitalization Project. One second, let me find it. I have it somewhere amongst all my many, many, many. I will be brief. Uh, LWRP stands for Local Waterfront Revitalization Program. The town is partnered with the town of Henrietta. The town of Henrietta is the applicant to the state of New York. Um, we are along for the ride. This was started over a year ago. And I'm sharing my screen. Uh, part of this planning grant is a requirement to hold community outreach and the second community outreach um, workshop for the public will be on June 23rd at the Henrietta Town Hall at 6.30 to eight, where we will be having posters and showing presentations on the posters of the different projects. Obviously our focus is on the town of Rush. And again, this is a planning grant. 
Once the planning grant gets approved by New York State Department of State, then the town of Rush has to go out and uh, apply for our different projects. There is a 25% match, uh, but it can be through in kind, all sorts of things that doesn't have to be cash. So just very quickly, if I can scroll down, hopefully. I can find my mouse. The first slide I'm going to show people at home and here as well in our big crowd that's with us tonight is what's called the Waterfront Revitalization Area Boundary, or they call it the WRA, lots of initials. And you can see it's in red. On the left-hand side is the Genesee River in blue, and the red line uh, runs west to east along um, right up at Rush Henrietta Town Line Road where the Transportation Museum is, and then comes down East River Road, cuts over 251, um, over to the railroad tracks where the train museum is, and then goes directly south. Uh, for its ether, eastern boundary, and the river is the western boundary. And then it goes all the way down, the, again, the railroad tracks to the county border with Livingston County. So that's what's called the waterfront revitalization area. The main focus of the projects that we are working on are up on the northern end. And I'll just quickly run through them. The first project is the Rush Riverside Refuge. Uh, we are looking to connect to the 100 acre parks where we want to upgrade our trail system that's currently there uh, to, to allow for hikers, horses, multitude of things. There are lots of culverts, there are bridges that are falling apart that all need to be maintained, fixed, as well as the trails. Um, the train underpass that you see on the left is goes under the Livonia Avon Lakeville, and that connects the Rush Riverside Refuge to the 100 acres. And because we don't own that, that's owned by the train company, um, we are seeking funding to have that um, greatly upgraded and fixed. That is our first project. We are seeking funding for, if I get my mouse to move. The second one is the 100 Acres Park, where again, the trail system and uh, many other uh, wonderful projects they have been submitted for. The Transportation Museum, um, which is on the Rush Riverside Refuge, they are looking to improve their water, put in um, ADA compliant bathrooms, as, as well as better parking and signage. The Railroad Museum is part of this. They are looking to um, increase their storage um, and lots of other areas. They also would like to get water brought to their project. There is the DEC boat launch currently down at the river at 251, and we are looking to uh, put in an actual boat launch for kayaks and canoes. Again, these are all wonderful dreams. We will see what happens. Um, Henrietta and Rush had a big discussion on connecting all the way from Henrietta to the Lanier Trail. And then you could go across the river to the Greenway. So we're working uh, with industry and their representatives to see what can be done. So it's really hard to see, but there's two possibilities of connecting from 251, either to the right side of the landfill or to the left side of the landfill, but that's all state-owned land. So that will be a, a big project to attempt to bring it all the way down to the linear trail. And even though I call it the linear trail, they call it the black diamond trail. Apparently that's what is referenced. We're also looking to um, hopefully get funding to bring the buildings that are currently on the Rush Riverside Refuge that the Monroe County Fair uses up to the standards where they could be utilized and be safe. 
And as you all know, water is a big part of this, uh, any project. We have included the East River Road water main, even though the LWRP, uh, we are told won't fund it, but if we include it in the LWRP planning grant, we can hopefully go out and get other grants, hopefully help fund that. So mark your calendars for June 23rd. And if you have any questions on anything, feel free to reach out to me. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, having no further business to conduct, I will adjourn this meeting. We are going into attorney-client privilege session. Uh, we will come back and open this meeting just to adjourn it. Can can Let's adjourn the meeting now, and we can just go into an attorney-client privilege meeting. All right, we'll do that then. I would like the town board, the building inspector, the town attorney, and to stay, please. All right. So we're adjourning. We are adjourning. All right. Do you need me to stop recording, so. town clerk? Or uh, yeah. You tell me what to do. Thank you, Sherman. You got it. Thank you. And also the stuff. Yeah, I did ask you to stay, didn't yes. I? Thank you. Thank you. You want me to stop live streaming after? Yeah.